It's time for us to understand the past, because this isn't in the textbooks. Most of the who's who, the mental giants of, of science, were Bible-believing Christians. People like Pasteur and Newton and Kepler and Boyle and Faraday and Kelvin. What'd they give us? Bacteriology and calculus and chemistry and computer science and electromagnetics and gas dynamics. These guys were brilliant, and they all believed in, science, in God and creation. They gave us things like the law of biogenesis, the electric generator, the electric motor, the law of gravity. Brilliant, man. The Bible didn't hinder them. Actually, it helped them. And I'm going to end with this. <clears throat> George Washington Carver, born a slave, 1864. Was he a victim? Well, he didn't have the best of starts. But did that stop him? No. He became a scientist of international renown. And he was going to go testify at the Ways and Means Committee in Congress in Washington, D.C., about the peanut and its effect on the economy. He was supposed to have 10 minutes. He was so captivating, they gave him almost two hours. And the chairman says, Dr. Carver, how did you learn all these things? And he said, from an old book. He says, what old book? He said, the Bible. The guy said, does the Bible tell about peanuts? And he said, no, sir. It tells me about the God who made the peanut. And I asked him to show me what to do with the peanut. And he did. Just think if we had all the scientists and all the money we're investing in atheistic science, if those guys were asking God for advice and for input. 